Today we are going to finish the notes on exponentials and talk about how to take the derivative of functions that are not e to the x, so any other base besides e. Exponentials part two, just to make it simple. But before we start this, we need to do a little bit of review of logarithms because we're going to need it. Okay. Now, in calculus I told you that we don't use degrees at all. We only use radians. In calculus also, very rarely do we use common logs. We always use natural logs, lns. So when I write these log rules, I'm going to write them in terms of ln instead of in log form. So first one, ln of a times b. These are things you learned in pre-cal and algebra 2. When you separate logs, ln of a and ln of b, if the a and b are multiplied, what sign goes between here? That becomes addition. Yes. The natural log of a times b equals the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. Does that look vaguely familiar? That you like you've seen it before? Probably haven't used it in a while. Rule number two, the natural log of a over b is equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Division becomes subtraction. And then the final one is the natural log of a to the b power. No. It's uh, b, LNA, right? b times the natural log of a. Powers go to the front. Okay. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever explained this. Okay. A natural log. A natural log is an exponent in disguise. So when you're multiplying a problem, what are you really doing to the exponents? You're adding them. When you're dividing a problem, what are you really doing to the exponents? Subtracting them. That's why they do this. And when you're raising a power to a power, you're actually multiplying. That's why these do this. Okay? Now, in your homework, you're going to be seeing answers that look something like this. 5 natural log of 8. That is not considered simplified, and this is something we really don't do enough of in pre-cal and algebra 2. A logarithm is simplified when the number after the ln, or the argument, is as small as possible. Okay, 8 can be simplified even more. So what I need to do is I need to rewrite 8 as something to a power. What power can I write 8 as? 2 to the third. Okay. Now, where can that 3 go? To the, to the front, and what will it do with the 5? 15. It'll make 15 natural log of 2. That is considered simplified, because this is now as small as it can be. 15 natural log of 2. It's like pulling as much out of a radical as you can. You're pulling stuff out of a log. Okay? Let's do another one. Let's say you had 2 natural log of 4. I need to simplify that one. So this is 2 natural log of 2 squared, right? And then the 2 as the exponent moves to the front and multiplies, and you get 4 natural log of 2, and that's simplified. Okay? Any questions? Okay, now we're starting into the calculus component. We're going to talk about how to take the derivative of y equals a to a power, 2 to the x, 5 to the x. 6 to the x, 1 half to the x. Anything basically where the base is not an e. Yesterday was exclusively e. Today is everything but e. But actually, this actually works with e. So the derivative of a to the x is equal to the following. Very similar to the e process. The first thing we did with e was copy-paste. So that's what we're going to do here also, copy-paste. a to the x. But then we have to throw a little extra on there. It's a to the x times the natural log of a. That's the formula. But why, Ms. Bell? But why? It just does that. I could go through a long explanation, but I don't have time to do it today. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. But now, watch this. Change the a's to e's. The derivative of e to the x would be 
e to the x times the natural log of e. What's the natural log of e equal? It's one. One, so it goes away. So we don't even mess with it, okay? So if the base is not in e, you gotta put this ln at the end, ln of the base, okay? Now, if it's a to some other power like u, the derivative of a to the u once again, if the power is something more than just an x, you copy-paste a to the u. You still do the natural log of a, but then you multiply, like we did yesterday, by the derivative of the exponent, which is du dx. So when you have a base other than e to a power other than x, it's going to have three steps. You've got to copy-paste the natural log of the base, and then the derivative of the power. Three different things. Okay. Now let's do some sample problems. For example, y equals 3 to the x. y equals 3 to the x. So y prime equals, this is like the first row. So the first step is you copy paste 3 to the x times the natural log of what? 3. three. The end. That's the answer. That is the most. Okay. okay, that's it. Let's try this one. <laughs> y equals one third to the x. Okay. Same thing, but just a different base. Y prime equals. What's the first thing I'm going to write down? One third to the x times ln of one. Third. Now, one third is not considered simplified. The three was fine. I didn't even talk about it. It was fine because three is the smallest it can go. One third is a quotient, so I can break it apart like I did up here. So that's what I'm going to do. One third to the x times ln of one minus ln of three. Okay. Now, do you remember what the natural log of 1 is? No. It's 0. Natural log of 1 is 0. Okay? So let me come out to the side. These are two things you need to write down and you need to memorize. The natural log of 1 is 0. And the one you were getting backwards, the natural log of E is 1. The natural log of 1 is not E. The natural log of E is 1. Memorize those two. Okay? So now... All I'm left with three, and you can't do anything else with that. So this is y prime equals one third to the x times the negative natural log of three, and that's done. All right. Any questions before I move on to the next one? Okay, next one. Y equals five to the two x minus three power. Now my exponent is more than just an x, okay? So y prime equals, step one, copy paste, five, two x minus three, times the natural log of what? Five, five times two. two. Where'd you get the two again? You're right. The exponent's derivative, okay? <laughs> The natural log of 5, can you break that down? No, that's done. But this 2 can go in front of it. Okay? So y prime equals 5 to the 2x minus 3 times 2 natural log of 5, and that's the answer. So far, so good. One more, and I'm done. Like this. Okay, last example. Y equals 4 to the sine squared of X. Of course, I have to throw you a curveball. Okay. Now, I am eventually going to have to take the, exp the derivative of that exponent, aren't I? So, before I start, I'm going to rewrite the problem as sine of X, the quantity squared like so. Because that's going to help when it comes time to take its derivative. Okay. Y prime equals. 
Okay, this is the three-step one because of the fact that it's not an E and not an X only. What's the first thing I write down? Four sine squared X. Copy, paste. And, and paste it just like it was originally. It's easier. Times natural log of four. Times, now, what do I need to do to this chain rule? Very good. Outer is the square. Inner is the sine of X. Nope, not quite. It is two parentheses to the first. And then sine X goes in there. Times, the derivative of sine is cosine. Are you all with me? All right. Let's clean it up a little bit, okay? This two, just like the two from here, can move in front of the natural log. So y prime equals four sine squared x times two natural log of four times the sine of x cosine of x. Am I done? No. No, because natural log of four is not as small as it can be. Now, I, didn't I already do this problem? Yes, yes I did. Uh, Look up here. Two natural log of four simplifies to four natural log of two. So I'm just going to jump to the answer. Y prime equals four sine squared X times four natural log of two times sine of X. Now, some people like all of this in parentheses. It can go either way. But that is the final answer. Do you have any questions? <laughs>